But I never saw the good side of a city Till I hitched a ride on a YouTube screen Big wheels keep on burning Yeah! Welcome to the Bike Man for You Wheel Extravaganza Come on aboard, we got all kinds of wheels for your bicycling needs Welcome to the Bike Man for You so you got yourself a mountain bike like this old school Schwinn Mesa GSX. This was like a $500 bicycle back in its day with a rock shock and whatnot, probably about 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. But it needs wheels. You broke the wheel. You ran it over with a car. You hit the curb. You, I don't know. Who knows? You lent it to your kid or your kid lent it to you. Uh, whatever. You need a new wheel. So let's get on to it, to a wheel that is equivalent to this bicycle. We do wheels, do we ever? The front wheel is easy. It's a standard front wheel. Let me put this bike up here. I know you're thinking to yourself, I heard all about these gears in the back. I heard this, I heard that. Let's start with the front. Standard front wheel for a 26 inch mountain bike. There it is. Almost identical. Quick release, standard, generic hub. It's a loose bearing inside of here. It's not a sealed system. Schrader hole, single wall, which is what these, that's what these were back in the day. Single wall, front wheel. The spacing is the, is the same as everybody. Let me, I'll give you what the spacing is because I know you guys start to get technical on me. But again, this is an entry level wheel. Spacing is, if you don't have a pair of these plastic calipers, they're really, really handy. 100 even, 100 millimeters even. That line lines up with there. Bada boom, 100. These uh, calipers are a lifesaver. If you ever need a pair of calipers, we do these. Awesome. Want to know the weight of this wheel? Thought you'd never ask. I just happen to have my scale out here. Let me zero that out. Turn that baby on. We got a zero. We do. Grams are... 910 grams. Would you like to know what the pounds? Two pounds on the nose. Front wheel, 26 by 1.5. Now, what tires will fit on this? Decimal point tires, 26 by 1.5, 1.75, 1.95, 2.0, and anything in between, as long as it's a 26 decimal point. You gotta make sure you got the decimal point. Front wheel, quick release, goes on to there, Awesome! Now, the rear wheel. Rear wheels are a little bit different. We have three different rear wheels. They're all the same rim, they're all the same size, but what changes is what's going on with that cog thing in the back. This bicycle is absolutely hurting bad, huh? All right, this here is a, first things first. Do you want a bolt-on or do you want a quick release? That is the first step that you've got to figure out, or what you had, okay? Did you have a bolt-on quick or a quick release? Check it out. Next, after you've, no, again, this is a toughie, but you get in the eye. This is a, oh man, this thing's been in the bank, I'm in the bay. This is a cassette, and I'm going to show you how to get this off. Let me take off this quick release. Bada bump. Okay, now, look at this very, very carefully. Now you're gonna find out what the difference is between a cassette and a freewheel. Notice the teeth here. Okay, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speed cassette. This is kind of rare, but they're out there. This is a seven speed freewheel. See how this part turns inside of here? I'm going to take this off of here so we can really see the difference. Here we go. This takes two tools. So if they're not there, they're over here by the scale. This is going to take a chain whip and a freewheel remover or a FR5. Here's the one that looks, that's what's inside of this tool. FR5. The chain whip is the part you really, you gotta have because you gotta hold back on that part. 
Well, we're going to get down here nice and tight, I think. Son of a... This tool here, or the FR5, sorry for the arm, okay, is going to fit right in there. FR5. Okay, now, if I just go to turn this off, nothing's going to happen. We have to hold back, okay? It's just going to keep sp spinning and spinning. So I got to hold my freewheel solid. And that's where my chain whip comes into play. And then we're going to be able to take this off. Now, sometimes they're pretty tight. <clears throat> This one wasn't too bad, considering how rusty and nasty this thing is. Okay. Right? That ring comes off. Now, this whole business slides off. There's no mechanism. The mechanism is here. Here's the other one. There's your big differences. And the big part is at this part in the front. There's how you can tell. Let me pick up my other parts here. Now this is, this can get cleaned up and get put on to a new wheel. No problem. These are expensive. So if you get the tools to get it off, then you got no problem. Now all I gotta do is clean these little pieces up and I can put this onto my new wheel. So this is what you have to figure out. So let's back up for a half a second. Let's have a little review, okay? Numero uno. What type of wheel came off of it? Was it a bolt-on? Was it a quick release? That's first. Second, after you figure that out, what type of cog or freewheel did it have? Did it have a freewheel or did it have the cassette? Okay, two different things. That has something to do with your wheel. All right, am I making myself clear so far? Clear, clear as mud. All right. In your cassette or your in quick release, we have the cassette in a quick release. Okay, here's that cassette body. So now your old rusty piece of junk, obviously I would clean it up before you did that, was going to fit onto this style. How does that fit on? One of these little slots is bigger than the other. Here it is here. Then there's a little notch on one of these that tells you that it's the biggest one. There it is right there. It's got a little itty bitty pin, like triangle thing. That notch is bigger than that one. So then this slides right onto there, like that. Obviously then we need to have the other stuff that goes onto here, okay? And that's how that works. Cassette, quick release, free wheel quick release this just threads on now how do you get a thread threaded one off you do not need a chain whip for a threaded for the threaded kind again there's what she looks like down the pipe I am sweating bullets here son of a Me too. okay so now you would take your FR1 that goes into there and then that comes this takes off of here, like that. You do not need to, what do you think? Is that cool is that not cool? How'd it come across there, son of a? Good. Clear as mud? You think it's gonna, think they got, you think they got it? I think so. If you have any problems, you know where to go. Come on and give me a call. You know that the bike man for you is your local hometown bicycle shop on the World Wide Web. Now, before we go any further, ooh, but bike man, my bike is a bolt-on threaded. Do you have it with a bolt-on? As a matter of fact, I do. And here's what it looks like with a bolt-on freewheel. Bolt-on freewheel. Boom, boom, boom. Bolt-on freewheel. This will accept a five, six, or seven speed spin-on freewheel. Five, six, or seven of that ba them bad boys, okay? So it's a freewheel thing that looks like this. It's either five cogs, six cogs, or seven cogs. It's going to go on to the threaded hub. Now, next, on the cassette one. Now, again, these are all 26 by 1.5. Cassette, 26, 1.5. 
This is for an 8 or a 9. But Bike Man, you just had a 7 on there. Yes, I did. Now, there is no more cassettes, free hub bodies, this part here, that is made 7 speed. They just don't do it anymore. So you're going to need a spacer to put on there if you have a 7 speed. Now, don't just think, oh, look, well, I'll make my bike an 8-speed. I'll go get an 8-speed cog. Your shifter has to match the amount of cogs that are in the back. So does all the other business, your chain and everything else. So either you're going to scrap the bike or we're going to hook you up with a spacer. If you need a spacer, just give me a shout. They come in plastic. They come in steel. They look like this. It's just a big washer is all it is. And then this is now going to go on to here first. Yeah, there's going to be a considerable space in between there to catch your chain. But this is the only way to make these things work nowadays. If you have a 7-speed cassette, most of the time they're 8 and 9-speed now. But if you need one of these little fancy washers because you got a 7-speed, well, let me know. No problem. No extra charge. Piece of cake. Only because I love you. Okay. I hope that I've clarified the situation between cassette and and freewheel. I know. It's a little bit confusing. I'm here to help you. If you need to, all you gotta do is snapshot a picture of the wheel right down the pipe for me so that I can see it and I'll tell you right away. Email the picture to bikeman for you at bikemanforyou.com and we'll be happy to help you out with that. Okay now spacing wise. Spacing is pretty much standard on all of this stuff. Um, but I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what it is. Here we go. Spacing is the amount of distance between the hub where it's going to ride on your frame. This part right here to there. Okay. This is a standard 135 is the spacing on this. Mountain bike spacing. 135 is the distance between there and there. Now on the freewheel one, it also is 135 with the thread on quick release. Bolt on quick release, 135. Okay, so 135 is your standard spacing on your 26 1.5 single ball entry level mountain bike wheel. Nice strong wheel. Uh, what did I what did I miss? Wyman? 519s. ISO number, you want to know an ISO number? It's 5559, 599, 55. 559 is the ISO number. 26 by 1.5, 1.75, 1.95, 2.2, 2.2. 26 by decimal point tire is going to fit onto these rims. I want you to never fear. The bike man for you is here.